Welcome back to TJ Militaria. Um, I've got some uh, new bits I want to show you. Um, I'll be nice and quick, try not to bore you, and I do apologise for any mistakes I make. Um, I'm just trying to get the hang of all of this. But I like to bring my new items that I have on the store and show you on YouTube because I think people get a, a much better perspective by actually seeing the product in in, as in real life, if, in essence. Um, the first two things I'm going to show you is a couple of um, brass um, flare gun cartridges. Now you think, oh, that's not very interesting. However, this one here, this is a French 25 millimeter cartridge and it is, on the bottom we've got a R and a stamp of 1939. The R stands for, uh, I'm probably going to get this completely wrong, a manufacturer called Rugiri, and they made French munitions and French flare gun cartridges for their pistols. Um, I haven't found too many of these, um, and but I've got one. So if anybody is looking for a 25 millimeter uh, Second World War French cartridge case, there you go, check it out on the website. Uh, the second one is a, another brass cartridge case. Now, for a flare gun. Now, this is for the German Kriegsmarine, Kriegsmarine signal flare for their Leuchs Pistola. I think I've said that right. Now, on the bottom of here, you've got a few indentations on the head stamp. You've got P. Now, the P stands for Polter in Magdeburg. Uh, on the right hand side you've got M which is for marine and just above that you've got a tiny little eagle and below that you've got the date 1934. Now you might look at that bottom of the head stamp and think well there's a stain on there. Yes there is a stain on there because when these were issued they actually had a piece of tape that was placed over the end of the head stamp and when they were ready to fire you remove that and place that in the pistol pistol now the reason that they're brass because the german army and the air force do not use brass cases this was purely a german kriegsmarine to keep the sea out and that's why they're brass so again i've not i've only seen one maybe two of these online if you're interested in a really sort of rare difficult piece to get hold of there you go, a German signal flare. Um, I'm going to now move on to just a couple of service books. Well, I say just a couple of service books, but again, I like to collect personal items of, of a soldier's history. Uh, I, it's just an area that I feel that people like myself find very interesting, and that's why I sell these items. Now, inside here, you've got a... This is... All, all original all comes with the book you've got the soldier's bible and it's just a small postcard that was slipped inside the service paperwork here in here you've got a pretty standard um service book it's got the a list of what the soldier was issued you've got some af w 3084s um, you've got casualties other ranks responsibility for notification in here you've got the name of this chap was an Arthur Charles Cartwright and he was born in 1919. He was a student. Um, you've got the usual marks and descriptions and you've got all the record of employment. Now, this guy, I think, was in the Royal Signals. And yes, he was. Uh, Interesting thing in here, it's got um, vaccinations and it's got 25th, 8th, 1941 refused. Um, so people were always refusing injections. Not everybody took them. Um, you've got a record of leave in here, a nice com um, comprehensive list of when this chap was on leave. You've got all the relevant training, um, any, any other marks, descriptions, and what weapon systems he's trained in, etc. Nice condition, not a bad one. Um, so um, in here, you've got his certificate of transfer to the Army Reserve for um, Cartwright, Arthur Charles, uh, 1946, 13th of June, 1946. This chap left the Army. So yeah, no, there's a nice one there, nice condition. Um, next one, again, I think this chap is a pioneer. Very similar to the other one. This one, yeah, it was a pioneer. This chap was born in 1915. And it's Arthur Chapman. And he was a length man, whatever that is. Now, this one has actually come away, which is quite common for these um, 
books because obviously these were used day in day out um, again this chap in here it's got his rifle scores it's got gas chamber test when he passed when he didn't it's all relevant leave etc and this chap here was awarded the defense medal france and germany star and the 1939-45 star so and his previous trade was a fitter no a painter and decorator sorry um, in here, you've got a, a record of leave. He had a, a comprehensive range of leaves from 1943 all the way to 46. You've got, again, um, there's a little annotation out there on the top. It's got a from previous book. So this chap must have had a lot, lost a book or it was, it's been damaged and they've written him a new book. Um, this one on here, it's got his medic medical classifications and we've got 1940 a1 all the way to 45 where i think it says b9 now i've not heard of that it, uh, this chap's taken his full range of um uh inoculations etc uh, next of kin in here and that's it for that one so again uh, another little snapshot into um a soldier of the second world war's um life while serving um I put this in here, I don't know why, but it's um, it, it came with it. And it's uh, the 14th of February, 1949, the Grand National Sweepstake Ticket. So <laughs> it's um, obviously post this chap serving in the army, but it, it came in the book, so I'll, I'll keep it with the book. Um, the next one we're going to have a look at is, um, now, this chap here is a medic. Now... You can see from the first photo here, it's a, this is a 1922 pattern tunic, I believe. And we've got a field service hat and a chap who's in the RAMC here. Um, this then moves on to the same guy standing on a wall outside a house. But this here is obviously some kind of photo that's been removed from a frame which is really sad, really, because this chap here would have been someone's son, grandfather or father. And it just it's just been pulled apart. And that's why I like to keep little collections together and bring them to people, because it's not just about selling these items of Second World War history. It's about keeping the history and remembering it, because if we don't do it, who is going to do it? And eventually we'll, we'll people will forget about all of this and all what these people gave us so that we can live and have what we have now so i think it's important that we keep this history alive so again yeah so this chap here definitely the same guy now in here he's a sergeant uh in there he was a private with his 1922 tunic here he's got the bat the battle dress uh and then there's another photo here with uh, the same guy he's got a pti um cross swords up there as well so he's a sergeant pti uh, again, he's got, and he's got some le um, gaiters on here as well. So with three other chaps. Um, now with this came some interesting photos. Now this first one here, this looks sort of around about 1939, 45, um, medical people, uh, Royal Army Medical Corps. Now I can only make a presumption that this came with this guy because it all came as one lot. And this is a sort of what looks like a field hospital. And you've got two gut, um, chaps here carrying a stretcher with the, um, you know, the first issue type respirators on the box type respirator on the front of the chest. So that sort of dates it around 1939-40 for me. Um, on the back of here, you've got this photograph must not be reproduced by any form without our official permit. Now, so moving on here. You've got um, some, there's a little selection of photos here. You've got some um, chaps pulling out a guy who's on a flotation kind of device on the old fashioned um, uh, wooden stretcher, canvas stretcher. And he's got some kind of complicated leg brace on here, which is just fascinating to see. And I just wonder how long it took them to put together. There's also a chap here and he's got a nice big dent in his helmet. And it's in, it must be in some kind of quarry structure. Um, moving on to there, we've got medics trying to recover somebody from a tree i presume they're using a tree to simulate either a building or some kind of cliff but you can see there there's a chap there probably the same chap because he's just got off a stretcher and he's got the same leg structure which it must be for a, a fractured leg um so yeah 
here we have another picture of this guy who's obviously floating on his flotation device with four soldiers because you still got the same guy with the with the crack uh, the dent on his helmet and this guy on here this really does not look secure but it must have been because obviously um health and safety there wasn't probably the um top of people's agendas um the next one is another photo another great photo of it's got some officers down here observing the same soldier it looks like being recovered from a top window again on this same stretcher with some soldier down the bottom holding some rope and then obviously another soldier at top lowering this person now what makes these interesting is they they belong to the daily mirror these photos do so uh, the majority of the last four i showed you and on the back of it it's got sergeant row and this photograph is the copyright of the Daily Mirror, Geraldine House, Rolls Building, Fetter Lane, EC4, and must not be reproduced in any way without permission. So these are obviously images that were taken by the Daily Mirror, mirror for um, either official use or for in newspapers. Um, going back to that stretcher again, we've got, um, I think we've showed that one. It's just, I think it's just a little bit further up the bank. And then finally on here, you've got him again, same soldier with his flotation devices. I'm not sure what they've used there, but they look very interesting. So taking all these together, they, these again, these are just a small snapshot of the Royal Army Medical Corps, who we don't, we, everybody knows about, but to see how they trained and to see the equipment they used and to see how they did it and how they rescued people is a real insight into the history of the Second World War, especially when I think this all comes with this chap here. And I would like to sell it all together and I've kept it all together. So if anybody's interested in it, look on the website, it's there. Uh, again, the service books are on there and the French and German flare gun cartridges. So I thank you all for coming to TJ Military. Check out my website and please sign up and subscribe to the website and to YouTube. That would be a great help to me. So thank you very much for your time.